Hey, and welcome to the How to Make This Stone Arch Stained Glass Effect from Paint to Life episode 61. In this episode, I made Kelimvor Lionsbane with his Panther form and this beautiful stone arch from Reaper Bones. The paints I used for this video and base paints are on the screen here, as well as layer paints and any technical and contrast paints that I used, so feel free to take note of them there. Uh, this particular project was kind of a fanboy thing for myself. I love the god Kelimvor, I think it's great. So these were the three models that I was using, and I was going to put them together. So starting with the Panther, which was Anozo's Marvelous Miniature from WizKids, um, I started with an inspiration from a real Panther, taking a note of the spots so it's not just a black cat, and um, knew that I was going to have to remove it from its bubblegum base. So using my snippies here, I'm going to clip off the Panther and uh, use an X-Acto knife <clears throat> to trim off any remaining um, material that might be around its paws. It's not a, a surgical process, just kind of get it off on there and there you go. So our first paint color here is going to be Dryad Bark. Uh, you can see I'm using a crocodile grip to hold it because now that I've taken off its base, I don't have the luxury of a regular kind of way. So this is going to be the undercoat of the panther. Those spots that we saw, or in between the spots I should say, in my source photo. We know the spots are black, but the area around the spots are going to be this kind of dark brown. To add a little more definition, I'm going to use some dryad bark using some white mixed in to make it slightly lighter and just kind of layer up the highlights of the panther. And that's what I'm doing here on the tops of the raised areas. Now using some Abaddon Black, I'm going to put on the dots. Just kind of using a regular brush to put some dots on. Not, not so many that they clump together and make big patches of black. You want to keep the areas between the dots showing as that different shades of brown pop through. Now for the eyes, I tried to use this silicon tip to get like a nice little dab of paint, but it was not working. So there's silicon tips like that are great for using green stuff but not for paint and geez it was having a hard time with these <laughs> all my brushes seemed to be too flat I couldn't get a good nice pin nice pinpoint on them so I kept trying different ones until I found one that had a good point and got the eyes done in Uriel yellow time to add a little null oil I put a little too much on one side so make sure you don't let it pool I'm trying to help cut the brown but if it pools it'll turn the whole side of the panther black so make sure you don't put too much on when you're using the null oil so now for Kellenvor, this is the WizKids Nozzle's Marvelous Miniatures Cleric. Uh, there's my source for Kellenvor. He's got blacks and purple robes. That's from the book three of the Avatar trilogy, Waterdeep. That's Kellenvor with his big bastard sword there. Um, so I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut off a bubblegum and it's not working very well. It's too hard. The blade is too small. So instead I use the snippies just like I did on the Jaguar who's there because this is earlier footage so be careful when you're using blades to cut this stuff as you can see using the snips I actually cut off Kalimbor's left foot see how it's missing here and now I'm trying to cut it out which I did but it's easy easy enough to repair just a little bit of uh, Gorilla Glue and hold it until it sets and is as good as new and now I can trim off the bottom so using some Barak Noor Burgundy for the inside of his cloak and you can also see to hold him, since now he has no bubblegum plastic base, as I call it, uh, I'm sticking him into some of this drywall putty or this um, poster tack by the feet so that he stands upright while I paint him. I'm going to paint from the inside out, from the inside, the deepest materials all the way out. So that's why I start with the back side of the cloak. Now some Abaddon Black for the back of his cloak, which is uh, pretty straightforward. We're going to give a little uh, special treatment later. And then we're going to go hit again from the opposite side of the cloak, inside out, working our way around. If you make a mess right now, that's okay. We can touch it up later. These minis are very small, 28 millimeter scale minis. So the details are pretty fine and, and um, pretty forgiving. Karak Stone, which is kind of like a nice little beige for his socks or his pantaloons, I guess you could say. And now it's time for his armor. So Rune Fang Steel for his pauldrons as well as his chain shirt and his sabatons, which are the boots. Which is the Rune Fang Steel Fang, Rune Fang Steel is a nice 
shiny silver, but not as shiny as Stormhost silver. It's just a nice, clean looking, knightly color. Now, his gauntlets for contrast and the hilt of his sword, I'm going to use Iron Warriors, which is more of a, like a, a black metal. But for these chain ringlets, especially, I don't like using too dark because it kind of you lose some of the details of the little rings and the holes that they are, have there. So now I'm on to Iron Warriors, which is for his breastplate and his gauntlets and the hilt of his sword. Because this character is wearing, you know, a breastplate with chainmail, there's a lot of metallics, and um, I'm sure better painters out there will do, you know, all kinds of great things with it. But for for our effect and for what we're trying to go for, these are great paints from Citadel because their range of metallics lets you get enough of diversity and variety so they look good without all the extra work of, um, you know, like a non-metallic metal, as I said. So now for his face, I'm doing Cadian Flesh Tone because again, it's so small, I don't have to worry about it too much, but you start with Cadian because that's the darker of the flesh tones, and then I use Kislev later as a wash on top of it to lighten it up so that underneath is the Cadian, which is darker, and the Kislev will lighten up on the um, tile, like his forehead, his nose, his chin will be lighter his knuckles but then the the recess part below the flesh wash will still stay darker because of the cadian underneath so start with the cadian flesh tone wash with his left flesh on top okay so now this um cloak thing nagaroth knight it's a nice dark purple um I, I, I called it a cloak thing it's like a sash under his belt but i'm gonna go with a purple and a blue so there's nagaroth knight purple on top and this Night Lord's, um, what's this called? Night Lord's Blue behind it. So I'm putting those on, using uh, my wet palette to thin my paints and just gently apply it and build it up if I want to get more rich color. His hair is going to start as a Steel Legion drab. Calamvor has black hair or dark brown, so Steel Legion gra uh, drab to start, and then I'm going to use um, a contrast paint on it later to get it darker and also to leave some of the texture so scrag brown for these belts that he has the leather we'll treat them with some contrast paints later just uh, to make them look leathery but for now starting with a nice scrag brown or another mustardy color will always be nice for leathers and belts that aren't metallic could have done them each different colors but I didn't want to go crazy now his silver storm host silver on the blade again it's the shiniest silver that um, Citadel has it's very pretty and it stands out enough so there's the three metallics on the, the body. So now the trim, using a Gene Stealer purple on the trim of his cloak, there is a little um, line cut in the trim on the cloak itself. It's not just me painting the outside, there is a little gash in it. So to paint this like that purple, kind of keeping with Kellenvor's purple and black colors was the plan. And then we're gonna give we're gonna go back and do some of that flesh treatment I was talking about earlier with the Kislev. So again, just the tip of the nose, the top of the forehead, the sh the uh, the ear, the tops of the knuckles with Kislev really watered down, so the Cadian shines through behind it, and that's it. Now I know you can use yellows and blues and reds for undertone of flesh, but when the model is this small, you don't have much to work with. So Sigor Brown on top of that hair, once it dries, the dark sections will look dark brown and the lighter sections will look light. It's a good combination. Now on the Sabatons, I'm using this product from Army Painters Metallic Selection called Fairy Dust. It's like a creamy, silvery looking paint. And the idea is whatever you paint it on kind of can take a metallic hue. So you can make a yellow metallic if you wanted. I did it for the boots, and then I tried it on the back of the cloak. And I, I was like, eh, why not? And I liked it. The boots had been Iron Warriors, the Greaves. Um, by putting the fairy dust on it, it made them lighter. And as you can see, that black cloak with a gentle application of fairy dust has a very kind of silky effect to it. It's not metallic so much as it is... Um, just sheen like a sheen sheer sheen color and there it is and now I'm going to use null oil on that rune fang silver those chain mails just to fill in those little dots don't put too much on you want to control the amount of flow on your brush 
I'm also using it on his back cloak where I did the fairy dust. If there's parts that are a little too intense, you know, you don't want the cloak to be shining like it's black armor. It is just supposed to be cloth or satin. So there you go, some non-loyal will cut that. All right, now let's look at this graveyard arc. This is from Reaper Bones, and I like this piece. I bought it specifically for a set piece like this, and it just worked with Kalimvor. So by starting, I primed it black with Chaos Black Primer from Citadel, and I apply this here, some Gorilla Glue. Now once it's, pla like once it's in place, um, I'm gonna use the Eshin Gray paint from Citadel. It's got like a bit of a blue hue to it uh, because I know there's going to be multiple grays in here so I don't want them all to start stone gray. I wanted to kind of have like a nighttime looking gray if that makes sense. Eshin is, I, I, I just think it's good for that. And you know when you apply it gently or thinly with uh, when you water it down with a wet palette like I have there, that black primer underneath will shine through when it dries and has a kind of cool look to it. So I painted all the stonage, not the, the flagstones on top, but just the, the around the base, which I will come back to later, just to get a nice starting gray look for this graveyard archway. Now that's time to start some painting some of the individual block stones. So I have Mechanist Standard Gray to put that down first on all these flagstones. And I'm going to blend it into the Eshin in some areas. Pick some of those blocks. Um, as you can see, I'm not holding this because the whole thing's wet. I'm just pushing around with my paintbrush. Let's put some skulls on it. These Citadel skulls, if you can get your hands on them, more skulls than you'll probably ever use, but they're really great for bases. You just plop some gr and uh, some glue down on them. Put them in a position. I left them in their natural. I primed them with wraith bone and then just used some null oil on them to I didn't want to make them too bone color I wanted them to look gray so now I'm using some dawnstone to pick some random keystones and paint them different shades of gray just so when it's all put together they all have different intensities castell and green there was this weird moss creeping around the arch and at this point I was keeping it as an arch so I did it up with green but later we're gonna have to remove that as you'll see it is a cemetery arch there's some uh, hinges back there too uh, some dawnstone on that cool looking cherub looking down at it and a little bit of uh, layering just to touch up on the front sides of some of those exposed bricks at the apex where the light would strike it okay and then we're gonna do a little more mechanist uh, standard gray again just layering it up and picking the odd stone on the side of these stones. Uh, I know I alternated the flagstones on top, but the sound, the, the round ones also could use a little bit of alternation so they don't look all flat. Now there are some hinges on the back of this, like a gate. So I use iron warriors to mark up the hinges and I was gonna make them rusty, but then what I ultimately did sort of came to mind so I didn't need to do that. Now we're going to use some Dawnstone dry brushing to pull all the grays together. And I've seen people do grays before and I've even done grays before where you use different colors like a peach in there or a green stone. So when it all comes together they, they don't look all gray because clearly you can see once I'm done dry brushing this it all looks gray. And you know what that's okay. There are different, uh, there are different grays in there but um, if you wanted to be a little less monotone then yeah you would use different base colors before you did the dry brushing niblet green on these little teeny um, lichen pods of fungus or moss and that's what we're gonna do because this was a straight cemetery I just wanted to keep it gray kind of give it a crypt look I didn't want it to have a field stone look to it so there it is some deadland tufts put in a position with those skulls and this is pretty much done now, how do I mount my minis on here? Well, because they don't have their bubble gums, I'm using this hand drill to literally drill out into the bottom of this big enough so that the cat's feet, the panther's feet, will sit in those holes I'm drilling. Because you can pin things 
if you don't know what pinning is it's when people put little teeny rods like paper clips in the models and then inside them they drill up in the foot and they drill into the base and they stick a pin in it and then it holds but this panther's feet are so small look at them they're tiny like two millimeters I wouldn't be able to pin that so instead to make it have enough girth and grip I drilled out holes big enough and I literally pushed the panther down into those holes so that the glue isn't just on the bottoms of his feet but it also grabs around the ankles as well and hold it in the position I want till it drives so yeah, when we look at this graveyard arch I had this cool idea since Kalimbor's a god what if we had a window like that like a stained glass window now in order for it to be a window, I'm using a product called acetate. Acetate is a clear plastic that you can print on. And the problem with printing is anything white in a picture uses the color of the paper to make it white. So this holy symbol of Kalimbor, I needed a Photoshop to make gray, not white, or else it would leave it transparent and the acetate wouldn't show. So I took this picture from the internet of a stained glass window. I photoshopped, up, photoshopped out the center section and changed all the white areas to be various forms of gray. I printed it on the acetate, as you can see in that picture there, cut it out to form, and then I applied it to the window. So by gluing it in place at the bottom with some Gorilla Glue, cut it to form, and now it's a little bit long, so I kind of pull it back and I realized all these lichen, all these green things that were there as moss are now holding the window out and I need to get rid of them. So I use a Dremel tool and I grind away anything that was bumpy back there, anything that was going to prevent that window from sealing properly. Grind it away, paint it back to the Eschen Gray, and then glue the window in place. Where do you get acetate, you ask? Well. Back in the day when teachers used it all the time, it was everywhere, but now you have to pay $60 for 50 sheets. Or here's a tip, go to your local copy shop and just ask them for one piece. I bought the single sheet for like a dollar because they'll sell it to you. Now I cut it to size and glue it in place and that is what a stained glass window looks like in a miniature setting. Just like this. And because it's transparent, the light can shine through and it truly looks like stained glass. Be careful with your glue, uh, it will eat away the coloring. Now because this is the God of the Dead Kalimbor, I glued an American penny and a Canadian penny to the bottom for the afterlife as representational. And there he is, Kalimbor with his stained glass window. It was tricky to, f to get the light right when I was taking the pictures. How do you back, you want to backlight it to show that it's transparent, like in that case there it almost looks like it's a flat image, but I managed. Not only did I manage, as you can see in these next pictures, you can get a silhouette. Look at that Kalimbor silhouette in the glass and the panther silhouette on the other side with the, the fighter out and then the front side. So there it is. That's Kalimbor in his human form. Go check out Paint, Paint Life episode 61 if you want to hear the story behind this Kalimbor and why he's got a panther there. You can see the panther side, how the spots shone, th shone through. And uh, that's what I have for you guys tonight in this uh, how-to painting video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below or email me at paintedlife at gmail.com. Other than that, I'm GMA Tank. It's been nice hanging out with you guys. We'll talk to you next time. Wash your hands, people.